Welcome to Module 5 of the ESPT training. Module 5 builds on Modules 2, 3, and 4 and covers sampling design for operational purposes. As a reminder, this training module corresponds to Module 5 of the ESPT, which I encourage you to have in front of you during this course. By the end of this module, you should be able to use the ESPT to develop a sampling plan based on priority program questions and available capacity and resources. Understand the importance of data standardization in the context of available capacity and resources. Before we get started, let's revisit our training checklist. First, we recommend that you have either a digital or paper copy of the ESPT in front of you, and please also have a notepad and writing utensil such as a pencil or pen. We ask that you retain your program question or questions identified in Module 1, as well as your indicator selected in Module 2, and your methods chosen in Module 3. Remember that each module builds on the previous model. Voiceover is recommended. The orange background slides signal our illustrative example, and finally, the gray background slides signal an applied exercise that can be done individually or as a group. You should plan about 10 to 20 minutes for each exercise. At this point in the ESPT training course, you should have defined your priority program question in module one, selected the appropriate indicators to address your question in module two, determined which sampling methods are most appropriate to collect the data you need in module three, and selected the right site type and corresponding survey type to address your priority program question in module four. If this is your first time working through the ESPT, I strongly encourage you to work through module five only after you've worked through and understood modules one, two, three, and four. Now we will explore how module five supports you in designing an effective sampling plan to collect the data you need to answer your priority program question or question. So let's begin. There are three concepts to be aware of in Module 5. A sampling site is the locality where mosquitoes are collected to obtain data relevant to your selected indicators. A sampling site can refer to any operational unit that makes sense for your context, such as a health catchment area, a village, or even a cluster of villages. A sampling unit is an individual unit for mosquito collections within a sampling site. For instance, a sampling unit might be a village, a house, a water body, and so on. Finally, the sample size is the number of units sampled within a site. For example, you might decide to sample 10 houses within a village. In this case, your sample size is 10, and your sampling site is the village. Module 5 outlines five steps to design a sampling plan. In steps 1 and 2, you define your sampling sites and units. In step three, you identify which units to sample within your site. In step four, you confirm the sampling method you will use. And finally, in step five, you set the frequency of sampling. Now let's learn a little more about these steps in the next slides. Before you start this process, you need to have already determined the site type that is appropriate for your priority program question or questions. Remember that module four describes the different site types. Now for step one, you must define what a sampling site is and decide where the site or these sites will be. The location of each sampling site should be relevant to your priority program question. To help, Table 11 lists a few examples of sampling sites based on different program questions. Let's see this table in the next slide. This is Table 11 titled Example Questions Post with Corresponding Appropriate Sampling Sites. The first column provides examples of commonly post priority program questions. The second column provides examples of what could be appropriate sampling sites. For instance, for the first example question, where are the villagers of village X exposed to Anopheles mosquitoes? A suitable sampling site could be village X and the other areas where villagers are known to be present during Anopheles biting times. Regardless of whether you recognize your priority program question in this table or not, 
always select sampling sites that are located in the area you need to learn more about to address your question. If you have capacity for a limited number of sites, select sampling sites based on epidemiology first. You can refer to module four for more guidance on site selection. In step two, you determine what the sampling unit will be. Remember, a sampling unit can be a village, a house, a cattle shed, a forest, a farm, a water body, etc. The indicators you selected will guide you in determining what sampling unit makes sense. For example, if you are trying to measure the human biting rate inside and outside homes, then your sampling unit will be one home. It is important that the sampling unit is standardized across all sites so that the data you collect is comparable. In the next slide, let's have a look at how Table 12 gives examples of possible sampling units based on questions and their corresponding indicators. Table 12 helps you think about what would be the right sampling unit for your priority program question. Working from left to right, the first column lists commonly asked priority program questions. The next column provides an example indicator that is relevant to answer these questions. Then the following column provides example sampling units. And finally, the fourth column lists key criteria you can use to select the right sampling unit. Let's look at the second question in the table. What is the human biting location of Anopheles in village X? Based on this question, a key indicator to measure is the human biting rate, which is typically measured around houses or other structures, such as community center, where people might be present during Anopheles biting times. The criteria used here to select the right sampling units were inhabited houses and other spaces and structures where villagers of village X are known to be present during Anopheles biting hours. Now let's apply this logic to our example. Remember, we want to answer the question, are bed nets an appropriate intervention for the village community of Katosha? Our sampling site is the village community of Katosha. We know that Katosha has 50 homes, we also know that Katosha has one border post that can have 10 members of the border police asleep at the same time. Since humans sleep in both houses and at the border post, it would be advisable to include both in our sampling plan. Recall that in module two, one of our key indicators to measure is the human biting rate inside and outside. Therefore, our sampling unit will be sleeping structures in order to be inclusive of both the permanent homes and the border post in Katosha and to allow us to measure the human biting rate inside and outside permanent homes and the border post. In this first exercise, please determine both the sampling site and sampling unit for the priority program question you formulated in module one. Use table 11 to help you determine your sampling site. For instance, will your sampling site be a village or a farm work site? Then use table 12 to decide on the right sampling unit. For example, will it be a house or a cattle shed or both? Please pause the video now. When you have finished the exercise, you can continue. After you've defined what your sampling unit is, it's time to identify which units you will sample. To help you choose sampling units, there are a few important points to consider. First, historical data relevant to your priority program question may already exist in the sampling site. If this is the case, use this data to help guide the allocation of sampling units. For example, historical data in village X might show higher density of vectors in lower lying areas compared to areas of elevation. So if you're interested in understanding where humans are being beaten, you might want to start by prioritizing the area of higher vector density. Second, the number of sampling units allocated largely depends on what you need to answer your question and on the available resources. In the ESPT, you will find three examples on how to use these two considerations to allocate sampling units. Please feel free to review this now if you like. 
Let's decide how we will select which units to sample in Katosha. Previously, we determined that sleeping structures are the sampling unit. In this example, we have enough resources to sample six sleeping structures. Six sleeping structures out of 51 is not many, so we need to prioritize exactly where we will focus our sampling. Assume we have the following information. In the south side of the village, there is a non anopheles level site. Villagers often report mosquito biting. Recently, several household members from the area were infected with malaria. In fact, in general, the south side of the village reports more malaria cases than the rest of Katosha. Therefore, we decided to prioritize sampling in the south side of Katosha and select six sleeping structures, including the border post, also located in the south side. Now let's practice a location of sampling units in a short participant exercise on the next slide. Now it's your turn. In this exercise, decide how you will select sampling units in your site. Work through step three and use the example cases to help you and remember to consider historical data that might exist, as well as the available resources to do this work. Pause the video now. When you're finished, let's meet again on the next slide. Now it's time to confirm your sampling method. You may have done this already as part of module three. If not, I encourage you to watch the module three video now and then come back to module five once you have finished. As discussed in module three, sampling methods determine whether the priority program question is correctly addressed. Each sampling method comes with its biases, advantages, and disadvantages. For step four of module five, use module three to help you decide the best sampling method for your question. Remember to consider the available resources. If you've already done this, great. Use this opportunity to verify that your chosen sampling methods fits with your plan. Finally, it is very important to ensure the sampling method chosen is standardized across all sampling units. For example, if the sampling method will involve human collections, such as the human landing catch method, it is important that all collectors be trained in the same way. Finally, step five involves setting the frequency of sampling. The frequency of sampling means how often sampling is conducted at the sampling site. That is, the number of sampling periods, as well as the number of sampling days or nights included within each sampling period. The frequency of sampling is largely determined by your priority program question and must be grounded in the available resources for this work. More frequent sampling will produce more representative data, but the quality of the data should be prioritized over the quantity. For instance, if you are investigating drivers of transmission in village A, then you might consider two sampling periods, one in the high transmission season and another during the low transmission season. This is because transmission dynamics differ between low and high transmission seasons. Sampling during these two seasons might give you key information on why transmission is high during the low transmission season. For example, what are the transmission reservoirs? However, if you can't afford two transmission seasons, then you should prioritize sampling during the high transmission season. Remember that table 10 in module 4 describes the minimum frequency of sampling periods for different types of surveys. And finally, the timing of sampling periods must also be determined. The timing of when sampling periods are established will depend on the question and resources. For instance, questions that are related to evaluating the impact of vector control tools should consider the mode of action of a given intervention, the mosquito life stage targeted by intervention, and timing of the program rollout of the interventions across sampling sites. For example, if a program seeks to understand what is the residual efficacy of a new insecticide being used for IRS, then if resources allow, sampling should start right after IRS spraying, and again once per month until anopheles mortality drop below the 80% threshold. Great, you have now completed module five of unit two. At this stage, you should be able to one, formulate your program question, Two, use your priority program question to guide the selection of indicators to address this question. 
Three, select sampling and analysis methods, including human behavior and HRP surveys to better describe vector human contact points. Four, identify the survey type and site type that is most appropriate for your priority program question. And five, design a sampling plan for operational entomological collections. Next is module six of unit two, where we will discuss entomological data management. We invite you to proceed to this module now. On behalf of UCSF's Malaria Elimination Initiative, thank you for listening, and we hope that this was a productive session.